Hello everybody, it is Mermaid Phantom from The Magic Crafter. I'm in strange lighting, I'm outside, there are people listening to me talking to myself, and it is awesome! Today we're going to revisit Mernation, a company that makes silicone mermaid tails, and we're going to do an updated Mernation review video. Because the last review video I did for Mernation was done four years ago when I got my first silicone tail, and if you don't know this, I got a second silicone mermaid tail from that same company just a few months ago. You can check out the unboxing video down in the description. You can also check out this cool merch and a mermaid quarantine video and lots of other fun stuff. I'm going to divide this video into three different parts. First, I want to touch on the ordering process for ordering from Mernation. Second, I would like to touch on the quality of the silicone mermaid tail that I got. And third, I would like to talk about the fit of the silicone mermaid tail that I got from Mernation Inc. A quick overview of what I got before we dive in. I can link a blog post here too that will give you a uh, a more detailed overview of every detail about this new tail, whose name is Rebellion. Uh, but this is a fully custom design. It is not one of their cheaper version tails. This is like the full on shabam, shabang, whatever. It's like extra, extra. I got it on sale because I had a half off sale when quarantine started, which is why I was able to afford the tail in the first place. It has the Hydra Fluke, it has the plated scales, it has a shooter monofin from Finis, which is different than the monofin I had in my first tail. And we'll talk about that later. And it also has fins, lots of fins. It is a glorious beast. Now that you know a little bit more about my new silicone mermaid tail that I purchased, Let's talk about the details regarding the company Mernation Inc. So in my previous video, I mentioned how Mernation has great customer service. They respond to emails quickly and they just make you feel like part of the family. And I am happy to announce that that is still the same. Their emails were a bit slower um, to get to me because they were super busy. They had a half off sale on silicone mermaid tails for crying out loud, like they were flooded, I imagine. And my tail did take a little bit longer to get to me this time. My first tail took about one week to get to me. This new tail came in about a month after I sent down my duct tape my duct tape dummy and my money and my design. So it took a little bit longer. I'm not sure if that's just the new norm for them or if it was because of all of the stuff. Oh no, I think I've been spotted. <laughs> um, funny, fun fact, I actually met a subscriber on my walk down here. It was really weird. It was cool, but it was weird. I'm like, wow, small world. Anyways, anyways, customer service was still great. The time to get my tail was a little bit longer, but I think that was due to the flood of people that started ordering tails due to their discounted prices. So I'm not gonna hold it against them. Still amazing turnaround time compared to every other company out there. Customer service was still mm, on point. It was great. And I will add that actually I, uh, had Erin add a couple of details on the paint after she had already put the clear coat on. Uh, we were emailing and I happened to take a walk and the email didn't get through until after she finished putting the clear coat on. And then I saw the tail, I was like, could you make it a little bit darker? And she's such a sweetheart that she repainted it and re-clear coated it. <laughs> I'm so thankful for you, Erin and Michael. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Thank you. The only thing I will say about the ordering process that I wasn't too happy about was uh, that when I got my tail, I got a box with a silicone mermaid tail in it. And that was it, uh, which is fine for me because I've been doing this for a while and I know what I'm doing. But I've also noticed in some other videos I've seen of other people unboxing their mermaid tails that there isn't like what there used to be, like a little fact sheet. So you had all the information of how to care for your tail. I guess there's plenty of resources online now. You can find tons on this channel. I'll link them down below. But that kind of was odd to me because you pay like $3,000 and up for these tails. And if they don't come for, with instructions, it's kind of like, what am I supposed to do with this thing? Let's move on to the, uh, I have my notes over there. What is it? The quality. Let's talk about the quality of my new silicone mermaid tail. So my new tail is a bit different than my old tail. It has different scales, it has a different fluke, which is really big. 
and the paint is super, super, super metallic and I love it. Uh, I can say with confidence that Murnation has definitely stepped up their game since I got my first tail when it comes to like their paint job and their ability to like mix colors and make things super, super shiny. I love it. It is awesome. I'm so happy with my paint job. If you haven't seen my tail yet, let me blow your mind. Although the paint job is beautiful, I will say there are a couple of things I am not so happy with uh, about my new tail. And one of the things is, and I think it might just be due to the scale option that I chose, the silicone seems to be a bit thinner on this tail than it was on my first tail, whose name is Sparta, because Devil May Cry is life. And it's not like a big deal. It's still thick enough to where I don't think there'll be any issues whatsoever. But I've just noticed that it doesn't feel quite as sturdy especially in the fluke like the fluke feels really floppy and lightweight it might just be the monofin i'm not sure but uh, it doesn't seem quite as thick i don't think it's anything to be concerned about it still looks great it still feels great and again i don't think i'm gonna have any issues but i did notice that it was a bit different than when i got my first tail so there's that not sure if it's a bad thing or a good thing it's fine with me at least right now if i have problems later i'll let you know and on that note, I will say one thing I was not happy about with this tail is that I noticed the inside of the tail, like the base silicone, because usually when they make tails, they have silicone and then they have paint on top. A lot of tail makers will, <laughs> getting squawked at, a lot of tail makers will try to match the color of the silicone they use to the colors of the paint that will go on top. And in my first Mernation silicone mermaid tail, Sparta, I had a part of my tail on the back that was purple and the front part was white or silver and that was the paint and then the silicone on the inside reflected that so there's a piece of purple silicone and a piece of white silicone so that when the paint scrapes off you can't really notice it. Well with this new tail the whole entire base from what I can see is white and I have a lot of black on that tail so it just doesn't make me too happy. Uh, it worries me a little bit because like as soon as I get a scrape on one of the black areas, it's going to stand out and smack you in the face. So not the happiest about that. I'm sure there's a good reason behind it. Uh, the inside of the tail itself seems to be more seamless, like glued together better. Sparta is a bit choppy in certain areas. Uh, Rebellion is a little more smooth on the inside. So maybe it has to do with their process of fusing the scale pieces together. I don't know. Um, I just hope I won't have a ton of issues with white blotches in the center of my black paint job. But again, the paint is beautiful and I love it and it's great for right now. I guess if it gets too bad, I'll just have it repainted someday or I'll just repaint it myself. One other thing I do want to point out about this fluke design that didn't have me too happy is that it only has two drainage holes. Now I know I'm probably spoiled because the Khaleesi fluke on my other Murnation tail has four drainage holes and when I'm done swimming I like to drain out the excess water, small amounts of it, um, as you can watch in this video down here. It's how I do my quick clean after a swim and I like to get the sand and the stones and everything out and I use the drainage holes to help make sure that everything gets out from under the monofin so nothing gets trapped and starts to grow or mold or whatever and I just find that really helpful. But with this tail, and I think it's because of the design of the fluke, since it's so wide, maybe it's because of the holes I have in the fluke too, I don't know. But it only has two drainage holes and it takes forever for that sucker to drain. It's not, not fun because I sit there and I try to drain the tail and then the mosquitoes just start eating me. And Sparta's like really quick about it and Rebellion's like, I'm gonna take about 25 minutes taking my time to drain out all this water. You just stay here and get eaten alive and I'll do my thing. Uh, it's probably just a petty little thing and I'm slowly finding ways around it. I'll just drain some through the drainage holes and drain the rest by just lifting the tail up and draining it out that way. I haven't had too much of a problem with sand building up yet, um, but just something to know if you are looking at the Hydra Fluke, it seems to take a bit longer to drain. And maybe that's not an issue for you. It doesn't have any effect on the ability of this tail to swim in the water, which we'll talk about in a second. Let's add an extra category and call it functionality. But the drainage holes are slow when you're trying to get the water out. And now we're going to move on to a category that I'm going to kind of change the name of and we're going to talk about the fit of the tail and slash 
the functionality of the tail. So I want to start out by touching on something I had just spoken about a little bit ago, and that is the monofin. My first silicone mermaid tail, Sparta, had a Finis Rapid, I believe, in it, a Finis Rapid monofin, and it has some pluses and minuses, but I will say this new tail, Mernation convinced me to get a shooter monofin, and if I could, I would go back to my old tail, take that monofin out, and stick a shooter monofin in it, because the shooter is just so comfy, it's unreal. And with my other monofin, my feet fall out of my tail almost without fail every single time. And it makes it really challenging to swim in my tail. And then it starts to slide off, which I don't know if that's related or not, but it starts to slide off sometimes. I have to keep pulling it up and putting my feet back in the foot pockets. And it gets really annoying really fast. And I can't do tricks with that tail because if I try to do any tricks, my feet just go bloop and the monofin goes bloop and it's not good. But with this new model fin, it swims like a dream. I have no problem with slipping. The only drawback to the shooter model fin is that it does not have replaceable foot pockets. So if you think that you will damage the silicone foot pockets, which are quite thick, so I don't think you'll have an issue with it. Um, I just would be aware of that. The Rapid does have replaceable foot straps or heel straps. So that is a good option if you are prone to breaking things. As far as functionality goes, this tail is great. I can swim, I can do all sorts of tricks. Like I cannot wait to show you guys. Stay tuned next week. You're going to get to see all of my tricks in 4K. It was, I was going so fast in this tail. I knocked my own wig off my head basically. And it was a little bit annoying because of that. I didn't know I'd be going that fast and doing that many tricks, but it was great because the satisfaction you get out of being able to do all the things you never thought you'd be able to do just feels so good. It does. It really does. So monofin aside, there is one thing with the fit that I do have a bit of a complaint about and it's probably my fault. In fact, I'm positive it is my fault. But my tail is a bit baggy in certain areas. Now their measuring process this time around, the video they sent me to, was different than the measuring process I did when I got my first silicone tail. Beforehand they had me measure down my legs and mark off different points and measure around each part of my leg without duct tape all over my body. This time they had me do it with duct tape all over my body and I don't know if that makes any difference or not. Uh, but the tail seems to be a little bit looser in certain areas and a little bit tighter in other areas, which is probably my fault. The biggest issue I have is the heels. And I don't think it's Mernation's fault at all. I actually think it is my fault because I thought it would be a great idea to stand in the grass to do my measurements because I thought, you know, I could dig my toes into the grass and balance myself better. Well, that was a really bad idea because the ground's not even, like it's not level. When you're doing your measurements, don't do it in the grass. Do it on a hard, flat surface. Trust me, I think that's where I went wrong. I'm pretty sure that's where I went wrong. Uh, but overall, I'm very happy with this tail. I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels, the way it fits, the things it can do. It is absolutely gorgeous, and it's just so deliciously dark and gothic that I love it very, very much. So Mernation, thank you for creating this one of a kind, beautiful work of art. I am so happy with my new tail and I am so happy with my old tail. I love them both very much. Bellion and Sparta are the best. Yeah. Click here if you'd like to see me swimming in one of my silicone mermaid tails or click here to watch the super fun, lighthearted mermaid quarantine video that I think everybody can relate to. In fact, just click on that one or click in the description and watch those. See you next Friday.